Hi everyone, it's Raja and Gottmik, and you're watching this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Fashion, Fashion. Photo Review. This week we are going to be tooting and booting the looks from the Flamingo in Las Vegas from season 14 of. This is the reunion episode of season 14. Now everyone comes together, they get to see each other again for the first time in a really long time. And you know what? Drama ensues. I don't even care if I know what's going on. I'm like, fight her. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you like fight her in a gown. And to generate more drama, as we know, you might need a little bit of liquid courage. And all the girls were provided with House of Love cocktails. Yeah. Yes. Cheers, Gorge. Cheers. You guys can get yours at houseoflovecocktails.com. By the way, I could not be more excited because you are back on Drag Race. Oh my God. And the panic ensues. I am terrified. No, I'm just kidding. I All stars winners, baby. It is next <laughs> level. So I can't even imagine what you're feeling. I'm so excited. I'm really, really excited about this. So congratulations to me. <laughs> <laughs> Love seeing all the characters together once again. And this is a time for them to really show off. So I'm excited to see what they brought. Bring on the dolls! First we bring to the stage June Jamba Laya. This angel like is, has stepped her harder than I could ever even imagine from what she walked in the workroom with. Agreed. Citrus, orange mm. on, on such warm, buttery skin. Looks absolutely beautiful. June really stepped it up and showed the house and Las Vegas who the f she is. And she looks absolutely gorgeous. When mm -hmm. she's walking, it just like looks so beautifully fit, custom, stunning, expensive. From the boobs to around the shoulder. Mm. I love the shoe matching. Even the hemline at the bottom is like, rounded, every detail is thought about. It looks amazing how she brought the orange into the makeup. Tool like puffing the shoulders out, like everything is thought about on this outfit. It is amazing. Anything mm -hmm. shiny, you just put it on and I want more. There's a lot and I mean like a lot. Yeah, and it looks like there's- Rhinestones and bling and beauty. That color on her is game over also. Gorgessa Fontaine Marie Delacroix of the House of Citrus Sunsets. That's her new drag name. You're welcome. Just letting you know. I give her a toot. I literally couldn't toot this harder. Next we bring to the stage, the one, the only, Alyssa Hunter, the Puerto Rican princess. Yes. She is looking gorgeous in pastels. Yeah, she is. She mm -hmm. has such a fun fashion sense. She's very like campy a little mm -hmm, bit. Mm -hmm. And she's like referential too. And I really like this kind of almost like mod Elizabethan vibe. I like the fabrics. Wearing shorts at length is a little interesting to me for this moment. What's happening with the shorts? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so the shorts are a little Amazon. But, but if like, I take whatever. away the shorts, I actually might love it. Kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. just block it with your finger and it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Popular Elizabethan gesture, like kind of also princessy. It's like every vibe back then, Bridgerton artistry in one. <laughs> but we have psychedelic leggings and an unstone <laughs> shoe, a hairnet, uh -huh. some mesh fabric. It's just like a lot of ideas. Now I've decided on these things emotionally. How? What is my first emotional response to it when I see it? And I think she looks wonderful. I think she looks like she's having a great time. And that color, the color combination and choices is really something that's pleasing to my eye. And emotionally, I feel really great about this. She first walked out, walked the runway. I think beautiful. The bottom half is where I kind of get nitpicky, but I don't mm -hmm. think anything is enough to ever boot this. She looks amazing, beautiful. I give Alyssa Hunter a toot. I toot it as well. Cornbread jeté. Cornbread jeté. Cornbread is walking out in a re-inspired look from what Willow Pill walked into the workroom with. Willow Pill walked in with a shirt that said angle, did a little bimbo Y2K moment. And now Cornbread is coming in with a more constructed artistry version of it. And it says ankle playing on the fact that she had, she hurt her ankle and had to leave Drag Race, which is so crushing. And Aww. she just came in 
made it fashion, made it a joke, made it just mm -hmm. everything cornbread is. So I am mm -hmm. so obsessed. Brilliant. Brilliant. I also am obsessed with the stonework. Like mm -hmm. she did not do like sporadic stones. She didn't do wall to wall, baby. She said, honey, we're doing an expensive Swarovski one size. It's gonna fit the princess seams of this look. It's gonna follow the lines. It's gonna be stunning. Those the are like thong. size 30s or even 40s. Those are the big stones. It's that's got some that's got some weight and heaviness to it. The I love the cleverness of the bodysuit so that she can corset it and it matches her skin. It's a healed crock, which I am all about. Uh, Cornbread Jete is an actual genius, and it was so unfortunate that we didn't get to see her the entire season. Like, the things in the bag are bedazzled. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a mask. I think there's a mask in there. I'm not a huge nail person, and these are just getting me off. Everything is so well thought out. I think this is one of my favorite things I've seen almost all season. 100%. I just really love how it's so beautifully thought out and well constructed for an outfit that's seemingly simple. I don't know why I'm the nice one between us, but like I might have to shoot it down. I like one to also. I, like, what could you even improve? I love it. Is it is so good. It's like drag. It's literally drag. It is beautifully constructed. Like even the shape of the crop top is just absolutely so beautiful. Her body. I'm shooting it. I'm gonna shoot it as well. Shoot, I'm double shoot. shoot. Oh, my oh my god. I, I just love this. I love it so, so much. Up next, we have Orion's Orion story. story. Yeah. Everything's kind of giving that like business 70s like power pump vibe, but like it's giving me ill-fitting Zara. Like it's like nine to five, like don't know how to dress for the workplace. <laughs> and <laughs> excuse me, all the women on nine to five ne knew how to dress in the workplace. I love the idea of wearing a suit in drag, but this is a suit in drag on a Las Vegas stage. It needed to be done in a different fabric that had sheen, that had rhinestones, maybe a giant feather stole to go over the, it's Las Vegas. You don't want to look like you're, uh, you know, uh, serving the cocktails. You want to look oh. like you are the cocktail. Right. Like this is, you know, this I feel thing. like she's kind of like behind the, the, the register or behind the, the booth where people like turn in their tickets and they're like, I just won 30 bucks. And then she doles out 30 bucks. I feel like that's what Orion's story is giving us. Is there a showgirl costume underneath this? Is there a gown? You is there expect. a bead? Is there a rhinestone? Is like, there a fake one? Is there a something? And the orange hair is really pretty and it's like bold. So I would expect like, she could have like belted it with the color, the nail, the color, like brought something in. It's just very mm -hmm, random. Mm -hmm. From the neck up, she looks so stunning. Like, look at her face. She looks beautiful. The hair is wonderful. The makeup looks great. But then the outfit's just kind of like Vegas. No. Like, but you know what? I also like the concept of being so irreverent to be like, you know what? I bet everybody's gonna come with all the rhinestones. So I'm gonna take it down many notches and be so different from everybody else so that I stand out. Is that part of the logic, you think? Could be. To even make that outfit more spectacular, we're just taking the pants off and put on a heel. It is a suit that I would wear uh, to go meet, you know, my, my accountant. But even going to my accountant, I would go without the pants. Dear Orion Story, you are a lovely queen, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and boot this outfit. Boot. Next to the stage, we bring Maddie Morphosis! I love the hair. I love the makeup. It's giving denim drag. It starts as a disadvantage for me because I don't even know if you know, which is so bad. I'm a denim hater. Really? I know. I'm, I'm not. I know I you're not. I love denim. I really want to get into it, but there's something about it that I'm like, my soul just like, it's like. For being the, the character that Maddie is, I would have expected something a little bit more. Uh huh. I think also there's such cool ways to make um, like a pair of jeans fit, like how a dress would fit. Right, like right, taking the pockets right, and really right. making them yes, a breast yes. shape they, and then like over exaggerating mm -hmm. hips with lines. And instead it's just kind of like slap a zipper on, kind of like. Mm -hmm. It's just very boxy and not exciting to me. And I know that there are other really, really cool creative ways to style and work with uh, recycled denim. I do believe in sustainability. I think that it's wonderful to recycle fabric, but this ain't doing it for me. This yeah. just looks like meh. Yeah, and mini skirts are so in right now. I want that mm -hmm. denim skirt to be a belt. Like mm -hmm. cover that little so little, <laughs> like insane. I can look at this and see that there's two pairs of jeans that were split up into one outfit. I can tell that the arms were part of the legs and like, you know, there it's, 
Yeah, there's definitely some stylization lines that we could have really played with with the jeans. Shred that fun. whole thing and stick it in the washing machine. Give it some fray, give it some denim feel. Wow. Right now, it just feels like two thrift store pants. But I do love the hair, I love a mullet. Love it, love it. Neck up, yes. Yeah, Everything and else? the makeup, like Maddie's been looking very mm -hmm. I think Maddie's actually quite beautiful. Stunning. Maddie's so, so beautiful. Like got that beautiful, cute heart-shaped symmetrical face. But for me, the outfit itself is lacking. Yes. Therefore, it's a boot. I'm gonna have to boot this one. Up next, we bring Carrie Colby. Carrie yes, uh, Colby. Carrie Colby looks like a goddess, as I would expect her to look. Just as stunning and beautiful and tantalizing and gorgeous and just Colby the house down. There's so many lines and there's stones and there's archery, but she's just so beautiful. You're not even. It just looks like a beautiful, like, simple gown on her, even though when yeah. you get into it, it's like, whoa. I like the oneness of the entire color of the outfit. Like, there's not a lot of busy to it, but it's still very elegant, very, very sexy. And it's stoned, it's sequin, it's shiny, it's sparkly. It's everything that I would expect to see at the Flamingo Las Vegas. And I would love to have a complimentary drink with her at the Flamingo while I played the slot machine. She really thought about every single detail. The tights are stoned in the most amazing way mm -hmm. possible. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Carrie Colby gets a toot from me. Toot. Next to the stage we bring Jasmine Kennedy. The hair is really pretty, it's stoned, it matches the stones on the dress. I love mm -hmm. like a full tool moment. Even mm -hmm. like the little shoes being rouged, I like that. I think it's a good detail that kind of matches the rest of the outfit. It doesn't need to be a crazy stoned boot cover. I love the pastels. Again, she looks like, I, th I feel like sunsetty is how these girls be looking. Like, I feel sunset, I, I feel sherbet, I feel something, I feel like she's very flavorful. And I just want to lick her all over, if that's okay to say. I'm sure she'll be fine with it. Jasmine Kennedy, <laughs> I'd like to lick you. <laughs> she just like really looked, took time with everything, her hair, mm -hmm. her makeup, her jewelry. It's still giving drag, it's giving a little like modern drag pageantry. I give it a toot. I give her a toot. Next to the stage, we bring Deja Sky. I do like, okay, if I'm stepping back away and I squint my eyes, you squint the eyes. Squinty the Time eyes. Time to learn, squint the eyes. Mm -hmm. And I can see that this color combination really does make me quite happy. I do love pastels, but really, it's sort of ill fitting, baby. Uh, and I know that there's a corset underneath there, but it's all sort of buckling in weird places. And I suppose that has its own avant-garde appeal, but I don't think that was the in intention. I think just like from her titties up, she looks fantastic. The chest down is an issue for me, including the shoes. I like a comfortable shoe, but I would like the comfortable shoe to be rhinestoned or detailed oh. or something like that. Yellow mm -hmm. is such a strong mm -hmm. yellow that it's almost, I would have liked it to get more brought down into the shoe. Right. Or somewhere down below or something that it, like your eye kind of travels with it. Right, maybe I'm, another drape of yellow across the waistband somewhere mm -hmm. or around the hip to add to the blue. But the yellow is just kind of like, oh, there's a yellow splotch of titty on, yeah. your, on your right titty. Yeah. And then it doesn't kind of go with the rest of it. Her makeup is really amazing. Right. And I think she's taking time to like get experimental with it too. Cause it's like, it's giving artistry right it's now. She's beautiful. She's doing like a, a blue hair. halo eye. Mm -hmm. And like, so, like that's a hard eye to execute. And mm -hmm. I think it looks perfect. Even the shoulder. I love how everything's like rouged on her boob and like comes up in the shoulder. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the yellow's a little random. The that, that fabric on the corset is just really hard to fit. I'm not super in love with this. I do like the colors, I like the concept, but I just don't think it exactly fits the way she had imagined it. Do I think that uh, Deja Sky is wonderful and beautiful all around? Yes, but do I like this outfit? Not crazy about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot this one. I get this kind of like pastel -y, Easter brunch vibe that I think she was probably going for, but yeah, the white shoe's a little random, the yellow's a little random, and it's a little ill-fitting, so I'm gonna have to boot it as well. Next to the stage, we bring Georges. Before we were saying how it's Vegas, so we want like artistry and crazy stuff, but I think like adding this random cowboy element, like it's giving a little campy vibes to me. It's mm -hmm. giving, like she's giving a storyline. I'm really, I don't even think I need anything else from what she's serving and it's simple, effective. I love how it's constructed. I love how she looks in it. I love the, 
the thoughtfulness and the rebellion of it. It's like, yes, I know all my sisters are gonna be in rhinestones and beads and such and, and tool and everything. But she was like, you know what? I do sexy, I give you body, I give you Georges, I give you a little touch of music video. So I give Georges a toot. Toot for mm -hmm. sure. Okay, so we've talked about all the other girls, but let's bring on our top five. Yes. Yes, first to the stage, Angiria Harris Van Magelsen. I mean, if you are going to a drag show at the highest level, I would show up and I'd want to literally see something like What's this. What's face? It's kind of like, I'm smiling it, with just my upper lip muscle. It really is that face. Angeria is pageantry at its finest, and then she makes it still modern in her in some way. Just the colors of the foxtails and the makeup and the hair and just like everything is just so beautiful, so beautifully done. I love the jewelry. The piled dew that is done so impeccably gorgeous. Yes, Vegas worthy. Flamingo stage. Yes. yes, reunion. I oh. think Angeria looks exquisite. I give her a toot. I 100% mm -hmm. toot this, like, to the highest level. Next to the stage, we bring Bosco. Bosco is giving us junkyard dog vibes. Mm -hmm. I love it. It is very me. Everyone's been being like, oh, you're too naked. And she said, fuck it, babe. Yeah, that's what I'm here to this do. This is what I do. This, this is what, what I, I do. And I like that. Mm -hmm. See, if I was doing this, I'd be like, I want crazy acrylic. Like, I would want everything to be so structured, but I think it looks really cool how it's not, in a way. Mm -hmm. And I like the mohawky Hollywood hair. She's just really going for a bunch of spooky ideas today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's spikes, she's pentagrams, she's chains. I like it when the bitches go like, all right, everybody's doing this, and I'm gonna do this instead. Oh and it might God. anger people, and it might confuse people, but that's what I like about it. Yeah. I love the cartoon spikes, the cartoon chain, the large bone. Ooh, it yeah. all seems very animated and sweet and sexy. Mm. I like this look a lot. Bosco gets a two. <laughs> two. Next to the stage, we bring Daya Betty. Oh, this look is beyond. Slay my queen. I love this look. Mm -hmm. I love this this like half and half kind of thing. Like one half of the body is encrusted. I love the nude tones that's used and the sort of like half cape suits on the side draped across her. The hair is very like swoopy doo princess dye. This to me is like one of the best things I've ever seen Diabetti wear. But I just really love this streamlined, sexy, clean. That makeup is beautiful. Look at her hair. I love it. I just it's love it. I so love it. I love it. I'm, I'm yeah, insanely she, in love with this. I mm -hmm. love that she took this glam version of herself, like this opportunity to show that to mm -hmm. us. And it kind of it excites me about her because it's her face, like everything still kind of gives me a punk rock vibe, mm -hmm. even though it's the most Glamazonian, like goddess look I've ever seen, which makes me just think she is just a punk rock princess at heart. And she's just always going to have that, mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. love so much. Mm -hmm. The shoe, honey, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the custom artistry shoe. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. To this to me is mm -hmm. beautiful for like killing it. Diabetes gets a two. Next, we bring to the stage Lady Camden. I think it's Eleganza. I like seeing her in black hair. I don't think that's a thing that we get to see a lot of Lady Camden. There's something kind of like Lily Munster, aka Yvonne De Carlo. She's like a little bit of Ema Sumac. Very classic. She loves that little headdress moment, and so I like that she like kept that for her. I do like seeing her do this kind of like edgier thing. Mm -hmm. I think the shoe could have been black. I definitely would love. Right, because that's such a theme. She's got these like, she's got velvets I mean, and satins and vel more velvet and rhinestones. I think the shoe could have been really wonderful if it were black. A black velvet, a black satin, black yeah. leather, something in black. But the nude, I think she was doing it as an intention to make her legs look even longer. Mm -hmm. But I would have loved to see a black shoe on that. I think she was even trying to, how the chain around her waist is kind of like diagonal, like following that same line of the diagonal that the chest is at, really mm -hmm. would have just given this like wrap vibe and it would have like really done what I think she's trying to do. Also that fabric's hard, it's kind of like a very wrinkly fabric. So it's 
I feel like we need movement and things going on to kind of hide that, but it's like very different for her and I think it's cool to see a, an angel go out of her comfort zone and mm -hmm. succeed mm -hmm. at it. Lady Camden looks sleek. I think she looks sexy. I like the placement of all the stones and like how she just sort of looks like there's something simple about it, but also not simple. Sexy. Vampire. Vampira. The shoulders and the hips are matching really cool. I really do like that silhouette. So I'm gonna toot it. I'm gonna give her two. And last, but not least, Willow Pill. Willow is giving us a little cocktail hour girly. I love those detox moves. That mm -hmm. whole thing is detox. Mm -hmm. That dress, thing. everything. Detox inspired. She came in with a little like detox roll. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that detox didn't originate that role, but it's definitely like, mm -hmm. it's a detox roll, isn't it? If she was like, hey guys, my name is Willow Pill. <laughs> and the shoe is of the same flat, random sequin as everything. Everything matches, it's really put together. She clearly thought it all out. Willow's a fashion doll. Like, she's the one that has like, kept me excited every week. And then this week, she's the one that's like, in a cocktail dress. But you guys, literally, she walked in with a tank top that said angle and some foamy flip-flops and no stockings. That's camp. Yeah, and so what I'm saying is like, this is this is part of that. This is that, that like, you know, paired back, I'm Willow Pill and I don't need to do anything much. I think it's a good dress. I think the jewelry is like kind of random, but it's like the dress is kind of random, so whatever. But this is really cocktail hour. This is really just them kind of being comfortable, sitting together, having a conversation, reading each other, calling each other out, starting arguments, creating conflama that the internet's going to eat up. That's what's happening here, and I love this dress. I think it's simple, sexy, statementy, and a toot. She looks great. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely gonna softly toot this one as well. Trend alert! House of love. House of love! It has flavors in watermelon vodka. Tangerine margarita. Strawberry daiquiri. Pomegranate lime vodka. And the non-alcoholic ginger mule and cola. And cola. Get yours at houseoflovecocktails.com. Our, Our top, top two of the, the week, week is... Cornbread! Jate! The snack! Cut-cut-cut-cut-cut cornbread. Cut-cut cornbread. Cut-cut-cut cut cornbread. Cut-cut-cut cut cornbread. Cut, 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 cornbread. Cut, 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 cornbread. The side, the side, the side, the side. We're gonna be crowning our season 14 winner on Friday on VH1. Oh my God, I cannot believe it's over. I know, it's been a long and fun, fun season. Be sure to tune in to the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race season 14 on VH1 this Friday. And if you are outside the US, Australia, or Canada, make sure you check in to Wow Presents Plus. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye, Gorge. <laughs>